In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create a giant Christmas bauble pinata out of chocolate. So the first thing you want to do is to melt your chocolate. I'm using compound white chocolate and I'm placing it inside a heat proof bowl. I am melting 2.5 kilograms of white chocolate. I know I will have a lot of access, but that is okay. I prefer to have more than less when I'm pouring it over my large balloon later on to make my giant chocolate pinata. To melt down a chocolate, you want to microwave it at 30 second increments, stirring in between. Doing this will prevent the chocolate from melting. You want to keep doing this until the chocolate is completely melted through. Once your chocolate is melted, you want to cover your entire workspace with nonstick baking parchment. Blow up your large balloon and then you want to place it in a big bowl or something to stabilize it so it doesn't roll away. Place your balloon with the smooth side facing upwards and then pour the melted chocolate confidently all over the top and the sides of your large balloon. I start in the middle and then I go around to the sides to try and get as even a coverage of melted chocolate as I can. Before the chocolate sets, I also spatula some excess chocolate back onto the bottom sides of the balloon. The aim is to get as much of the balloon covered in chocolate as possible. Now allow the chocolate to set on the outside of the balloon. When it has completely set, flip the balloon over and set it onto your stabilizer. I'm going to pour some more melted chocolate around the top, leaving about a three to four inch round opening at the top to remove the latex balloon. You can use an offset spatula to try and get that chocolate layer as smooth as possible. To make our bauble cap, I'm using a pie dish and I'm going to lay a piece of cling wrap over this. Next, snip a teeny tiny hole right in the middle of the cling wrap. Make sure it's a really small hole, just big enough to thread through a long piece of kitchen twine. Thread through your piece of kitchen twine. Make it as long as you possibly need for when you want to hang up the pinata later on. We want about 10 to 20 centimeters of access running inside of this dish. In hindsight, it would have been better if I made some knots to the string that is inside of the dish. So I do recommend tying some large knots just so that the chocolate has something to grip to. Pour in some melted chocolate into the pie dish so that it reaches all the way to the top. You should have a lot of residual string running from underneath the cling wrap out of the pie dish onto the side. It's really important this element is made really well as this provides the full structural stability for your pinata. Set this aside to dry completely. Now we're going to color and paint our large bauble. I'm using edible art paints by Sweet Sticks. This is an alcohol based paint that dries matte on chocolate and so i'm going to use a large clean brush to paint this edible paint all over my bauble you can use any color you like i'm going to start with a pink base all over this large chocolate bowl you can also use a spray gun loaded up with colored cocoa butter and spray it all over your chocolate bauble Try and get one good coat over the entire chocolate bauble. Allow the paint to dry as much as possible and then flip the entire chocolate bauble over onto the stabilizing dish. Be careful when you're doing this, the chocolate ball is actually quite heavy on top of being very fragile. After painting the entire chocolate ball, ball the next step is to add a little bit of a secondary color. I'm using a painting sponge to do this, dip in some purple paint, and I'm just going to sponge this all around what it will be the bottom portion of my chocolate ball. ball. You can paint any pattern or effect you like, but I'm doing this little sponge texture all the way around the bottom half of the bauble to create just a two-tone color effect. Allow this to dry completely, and now I'm going to make some decorations. I'm actually using a gemstone isomalt mold, but I'm just going to place my melted chocolate into this and palette knife this melted chocolate all over. Try and fill all of the holes and then smooth out the top surface Give it a tap and then allow it to set completely. When the chocolate has set, flip it over some baking parchment and then give it some firm, confident taps and all of the chocolate pieces should 
pop out from the mold quite easily. In addition to these chocolate gems, I'm also going to make some fondant embellishments using some lacy mold cutters. And so I'm just going to roll up some fondant here to about four millimeters thick. You can use corn flour or icing sugar to stop the fondant from sticking onto the bench. I'm using these lace cutters and impression makers to cut out these lacy decorative pieces to cover the top portion of my Christmas bauble. You can feel free to cut out any type of shape or decorations you like. You can do stars or dots or even pearls. You just need some sort of fondant embellishment to decorate the top portion of your bauble and to cover up some of those rough portions of chocolate. So you saw that, that I flipped my entire bauble back the other way so that I've got the tied part on top. And I'm just going to decorate this top portion with the fondant cutouts that I made earlier. Try and keep your fondant cutouts quite thin. We do not want to add any unnecessary extra weight onto our bauble. We want to keep try and keep it as light as possible. I'm going to use a small piping bag filled with melted chocolate and pipe some small little dots all around the bauble and attach my chocolate gemstones to my chocolate ball. Feel free to get as creative as you like with the decorations for your Christmas bauble. I chose a more sophisticated, elegant design, but you can absolutely change it up to make it anything you want. Now it's time to remove the balloon. I'm popping a small hole in the top portion of the balloon, and I'm going to try and pull out as much of that balloon as I can. Now, full disclosure, the balloon didn't actually come out in one whole piece, so I had to cut a hole using a serrated knife to try and put my entire hand in and pull out all of the different bits of balloon. Now that I've removed the balloon from inside the hollow of my chocolate bauble, I'm going to paint all of my decorations. I'm using edible gold luster dust mixed with a little bit of decorator's alcohol, and I'm just painting this all over the fondant decorations. I also brushed this over the chocolate gemstones. You can dry brush it on or use edible art paints, which adheres to chocolate and paint that over any chocolate decorations that you attach onto the bauble as well. So my bauble cap has completely set. I'm going to remove it from the pie tin, remove the excess cling wrap and check out my piece and give it a little test just to make sure that it is hanging well and holding well. Now for the really fun part, you can fill your pinata with any lollies, candies or confetti. Try and not go overboard. You want to keep your pinata as light as possible. You do not want it to come crashing down before you smash it. Place some melted chocolate all around the rim of your chocolate bauble, all around that hole. And we are going to use that melted chocolate to stick the cap onto the bauble. Be very liberal with the melted chocolate because we want a very secure attachment here. Make sure to check that the cap is really well secured onto your chocolate bauble. Allow it to set completely before testing it out and hanging it up to smash. Be warned, it is very, very heavy. Only hang it up when you are ready to smash your pinata. I hope you give this project a try, even if it's with a smaller balloon. It is so much fun, not just for Christmas time, but for all festivities. Thanks for watching this tutorial and if you'd like more incredible recipes, tutorials and free cake guides, go down to the description box below and click my free cake decorating bundle. And to stay up to date with all my new releases and tutorials, remember to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on notifications so you're not missing out on all the new content. See you next time.